okay, in this second part of the video here, um, of the review of the Albion AG40 DFX and AG80 DFX amplifiers, um, we're going to look at the clean channel of the Albion AG40 DFX first. Okay, and that's a small 40 watt 1x12 combo amp. Uh, I'm using two here in stereo. Um, and hopefully the first thing you'll notice is that is how quiet it is. I'm actually plugged into the amp right now and there's just no noise. You can't even tell it's on. There's no buzzing, no humming, nothing. Uh, if I turn it up... Um, If I switch it to the bridge, it's even louder. I mean, that's remarkable for such a tiny amp, you know, through a little 1x12. I suppose when you combine both, you're really working with an 80 watt 2x12 amp. But it sounds full, um, great bass response. And um, the thing to notice here is also the, the dynamics, how it um, bounces almost, the, the sound. that you would find more in a, a tube amp. Um, okay, the next thing is dynamics wise. And what I mean by that is um, how it almost pops the, the notes out. You know, if I'm playing a... thing where it sounds kind of like it's in a cathedral it's re it's real subtle and it's kind of a combination of a reverb delay it's kind of like an echo Thank you. 
for me, um, the fact that it's so portable is really light amp in comparison, my goodness, to a, a tube amp. In particular, I tried a Fender Twin. I could hardly um, lift it to, from my car into this room. It was that heavy. It was crazy. Um, and, you know, walking on the two of them, you know, um, you'd be... And this has happened to me so often. You know, by the time you get set up, you're exhausted, and then you have to play, you know, a gig, you know, for, for two to four hours. But you're already worn out, you know, just from carrying the stuff. And, um, and getting that sound, you know, which is very similar to, for me, to a tube amp. Um... did find the, uh, you know, I had a, a little modeling pedal board. I tried to match the clean sound. It has a real unusual EQ curve, you know, to match this kind of clean sound. And you hear that kind of echoey. Delay and H9 uh, Line 6 M5 uh, Boomerang Free Sampler That kind of thing Now when I turn that on And you add delays I mean this is direct right into the amp A little 40 watt amp um, You'll hear it's just a great sound I think And when you add delay to that um, you know, To this sound For me it's just exactly what I'm looking for This kind of atmospheric clean sound which I really love this kind of
over to that right on the pedal board and I think I'll add a looper here on the when I'm playing this kind of distortion pedals type things. Uh. Thank you. 
kind of any kind of rock stuff, I think. <laughs> foot switch uh it's a little midi controller it's supposed to be on my pedal board i haven't mounted it yet but it's back there so that's why i'm switching <laughs> Just this is just the clean channel, you know. So it doesn't really have the sound of a fender clean. Or a Marshall clean. It's kind of in between, really. Uh, what I really like about it is just uh, the, the digital effects. You know, if you don't set them too high, of course, um, are very pleasing to the ear. They don't really get in the way, and uh, that it plays nicely with pedals. You know, you can use pedals right into the front of it. You know, delays, choruses, reverbs, and so on, and it'll, it'll sound good. Um, including on a single note. response and um, doesn't really matter uh, just about how loud you can turn them up and they'll still stay clean you know a lot of them they'll crap out especially on the low end you know um, especially on these little amps you know they'll usually crap out and start distorting and things distortion channel right now we're just concentrating on the clean uh, and that's how I usually use these Turn the 
digital effects off as well and get that real dry sound if you want it. You know? uh, but for me, for example, I'm playing in my little studio room, you know, uh, I'd much rather have the sound I'm playing in a... That's the little Albion, uh, 40 watt. And, uh, for the price, you know, I mean, these are, usually I've seen them, I mean, brand new. You know, being sold for like a hundred or fifty dollars or less, you know, hundred forty-five dollars usually, plus shipping. Yeah. So it's really kind of like a budget boutique app, if you like. Uh, people really miss the point uh, of the little Albion amp. Um, you know, for the price, you obviously can't go wrong. I mean, you can definitely uh, play gigs with this amp very easily, in fact. Um, but I think it's just uh, for the price, you can't go wrong. But it's an alternative um, to the tube amp. You know, which is much heavier, more fragile. Um, amps go, you know, the tubes go microphonic. The weight of the amps. Um, so this is a real alternative, and it gives you a different kind of sound um, that I find very pleasing, especially, especially with um, some extra delays and reverbs and things, and still very, very clear. And tube-like, I mean, it's, you know, to me it feels like I'm playing like a tube amp, you know, it's not, um, it's not like I'm, I'm saying, gosh, I wish this sounded more like tubes instead of a solid state. Uh, you know, um, highly recommend it uh, if you can find one. You know, and they're they're getting harder to find, and hopefully the price won't go up. Uh, truth is, I think people just don't know, you know, um, how really good these amps are, and uh, what can be done with them. Um, so I, I definitely stocked up on on them while I had a chance. Uh, because you know, they're really, they're blowing them out for so little money, you know. Um, so anyway, I yeah, I just highly recommend. I really like the the sound of it. Um, it changed the way I played, most definitely. Um, and I'm trying to think of what else. Well, one other thing too is, I mean, you can record, you know, with these little 40 watt amps, uh, entire albums. I mean, I'm, I'm an album 200 to 234 <coughs> of my albums. Um, I've done 234 albums, and 200 to 234 were all done with the little 40 watt Albion amps. And truth be known, I get a better, cleaner uh, sound than I do my big rack setup over here. Um, you know, uh, and the sound is just as big, really, and full as well. You know, um, and believe me, as you get older. Uh, 
you get tired of, you know, lifting around a big 4x12 cabinet, an extremely heavy tube amp, you know, you're very pleased to not sacrifice a big sound, but to have a little amp that's portable and light, you know. Um, there's a lot to say for that. And in fact, even the 80 watt um, is not terribly, terribly heavy. I mean, it's it's heavy, but not compared to like a Fender Twin or something like that, which is just ungodly heavy, really. Uh, okay, so that's my take on the Albion AG40 DFX. Um, I just love the sound of it. Uh, very clean, very dynamic, very tube-like, without all the hassles. And plays well with pedals. You can run them right into the amp with no problems. And surprisingly, the built-in effects are quite subtle and will work with even the pedals that you bring in, even distortion, you know, that you plug right into the front of it. Um, though I, I have to say, I, I highly recommend to, to run in stereo because then you really get this kind of uh, bit atmosphere, you know, as if you were playing in a, a big stadium or cathedral or something. It's really quite something. You know, that stereo uh, separation is there. It's just a great stereo sound. Probably, yeah, that's one of the best I've heard, certainly. I mean, I've, I've run, uh, you know, pods and things that are in stereo and so on. And you get a stereo sound as well. But it's just not quite as defined, maybe, is a good word for it. All right, next we'll take a look at the Albion AG80 DFX. See you then in part three, I guess. Very good.